Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video and another new-ish radio to look at. Now there has been quite a few new radios released lately and while this is not really my passion for making videos, it's something that some of you have become accustomed to. So here is the TID Radio H3 Plus. Now if you already have the H3 that I reviewed a little while ago, let's quickly talk about if it's worth upgrading to the Plus Edition. So from this slide, which is taken directly from the TID Radio website or TID Radio, it shows that the H3 Plus has an 800% increase in CPU power. That's from 30 megahertz to 240 megahertz. Internal storage has also been taken from one megabit right up to 128 megabit. Now that's megabit and not megabyte, assuming that they have the correct text there. So how can that benefit end users? Well, apart from maybe a speedier and more responsive UI, probably not much else. Unless, of course, you'll be loading third-party custom firmware, which is why I think they made these changes, as the original H3 ended up being a viral radio because of Nick Shaw, who created some custom firmware for it. Now, this slide provides a little more details with the new features on the Plus version. Firstly, it seems Bluetooth audio is now supported and that becomes apparent of what else I got in the box. As well as Bluetooth audio, it does still support programming from Bluetooth with a Bluetooth enabled mobile device that's running the OD Master application. Apparently you can also use the global network radio feature of OD or Odd Master with the H3 Plus, which of course works over the internet, essentially turning the H3 Plus into a POC radio. Text messaging is now supported, so you can send text messages to other users. Now, unfortunately, I can't demonstrate this as I don't have another H3 Plus, and I did try to figure out the protocol. But if you know the protocol yourself, let us know down in the comments to see if I can decode it. Display modes and menu colors can now be adjusted to suit your needs or your visual delights. Now, talking of the OD Master application, you can also upgrade the firmware using the OD Master website. However, personally, I could not get it to work using that Kenwood style programming cable. So I ended up using the USB C cable and just using the Windows firmware upgrade software, which you can get from their website. The kit that I received comes with a few extras, including three USB C cables two belt clips, two wrist straps, some weird PTT cable, a Bluetooth PTT button, which I guess you can attach to your vehicle's steering wheel, a mains USB power supply, and of course, a Bluetooth speaker microphone, along with the radio. Down the left side of the mic, there is a PTT button, and then two buttons, which are used to control the output volume. That's just up and down. Down the right side, there's a USB-C socket, which of course is used to charge the microphone's internal rechargeable battery. On the top, there's a status LED and an orange button, which is used to power on or off the Bluetooth microphone. Now the battery inside the microphone is removable, but you do not get any external charger for this. So it looks like you can only charge it while it's actually installed in the microphone via that USB-C socket. Now overlooking the radio itself, it appears that the hardware looks the same as the previous version. If you've not seen this radio before, let me quickly go over it. Down the left side, there are three buttons. The top button is the main PTT button and the lower two buttons are user definable function buttons. On the right side, under a little rubber flap, there's a Kenwood style speaker mic socket, which also doubles up as a programming port. Now below that is a USB-C socket, which is also used for programming. Now when using this USB-C for programming, no special cable is required. Just a standard USB-C data cable can be used. Plus the transfer speeds are way faster for reading and writing to the radio than compared to that Kenwood style programming cable that we've come accustomed to. Charging the battery is directly on the battery itself. And that is also in the form of a USB socket on the bottom. Okay, so let's have a brief overview of the menu system. Now my only complaint about this radio at the moment is that the buttons are extremely small compared to other radios. And even though you can completely program the radio using the menu, I do find programming a lot easier using software or the OD Master app. Bluetooth can be enabled or disabled from within the menu and you also have the option to scan for a device. This means that not only can we use the included BT speaker mic, 
we can also pair to other audio devices that support Bluetooth. Okay, so let's get into some of the testing. And the first test, let's take a look at spurious emissions. So firstly, on the two meter band with the radio set at 145 or 500 megahertz and the power level set at high, I'm transmitting into my tiny SA Ultra through a 60 dB attenuator. Now this is showing a fairly decent result with those tail end harmonics being more than 50 dB down from the fundamental. Now if we go up to the 70 centimeter band, we do see a fairly clean output too, but some rather strange harmonics at much higher frequencies. I'm pretty sure these are within specification, at least for the FCC, but normally on other radios that I've seen that are clean on 70 centimeters, nothing ever shows up at such high frequencies. Now I do have the Tiny SA Ultra connected directly to the radio and those harmonics higher up are not apparent when I'm not transmitting. Now moving on to how well the audio sounds over the air, I'll use my SDR Play SDR receiver and an application called SDR Uno to monitor the audio. I'll test using the radio's microphone and then I'll test using the Bluetooth microphone connected to the radio via Bluetooth audio. This is uh, M0 DQW just testing the transmitted audio uh, uh, from the TID radio H3+. Plus. This is just an audio test from the H3 Plus uh, with the uh, bandwidth set to narrow. The bandwidth is set to narrow, M0 DQW. This is uh, M0 DQW testing the transmitted audio from the TID radio H3 Plus. This is using the microphone on the internal, on the radio itself. Uh, and now the uh, bandwidth is now set to wide. Bandwidth is set to wide, M0 DQW, over. This is uh, M0 DQW, just testing the transmitted audio from the Bluetooth handheld uh, speaker microphone. Uh, seems to be a bit of a delay. I'm having to shout quite loud into the microphone. Um, to, to talking, but this is probably talking around three inches away. Talking around three inches away. Uh, the gain level is actually set to five maximum uh, for the speaker, Bluetooth speaker mic. This is uh, M0 DQW, now talking a little bit closer to it. Okay, so that's transmitting. Now, one thing I did notice when transmitting using the Bluetooth microphone was a delay when pressing the PTT on the Bluetooth mic to when the radio actually started to transmit. Now, I don't personally use Bluetooth microphones that often, but surely this is not really acceptable. If you press the PTT and start talking immediately, then the first part of your transmission will not actually be transmitted. I think there needs to be some further work there. Okay, so let's move on to the internal speaker and to see what it sounds like. Now, obviously, you're going to be hearing it through my camera's microphone, which is actually a quite a good microphone. Take a listen to this and then let me know what you think. We're sort of wary of really. That's that's really what it was. But uh, but otherwise, you know, it, it's it's fine. And uh, I just experiment with the other things, you know, with the with the, with the uh, Bluetooth microphone and use some of my old mobile phones and sort of, uh, you know, do things with them and uh, just to make the most of things because it just seems a shame just, 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 you know, to throw things out when they still, uh, when they can still do something uh, back to you. Now, personally, I think that actually sounds pretty decent and I had the volume turned up quite high and there was no distortion. So moving on to testing the power output with the radio set to high power at 145 megahertz, the power meter shows an output of a smidge just under five watts. If we then move up to the 70 centimeter band at around 435 megahertz, we see an output of just over four watts. And one of the other favorite features of this radio is that it can apparently receive airband using amplitude modulation. So let's give it a try. Good morning, Cuban. 42 Delta Bravo, flight level 330, tow bits for the Unigra to head to Oliver. 42 Delta Bravo, landing in Oliver. Cuban 42 Delta Bravo, sorry, pre assigned the speed of decimal 72 or less, and 250 on conversion. 42 Delta Bravo, thank you. Delay, Chef, that's happening. Lectures 505, South Bass Fly Radar heading of 150 degrees, and when you're ready, the test button 200 feet level of the interrupted. Heading of 150 degrees and the wind ready, descent level 200 uh, to be level at the Morocco section, uh, 05, sometimes. United 5, continue for heading, descent level 200 level of the Tobit. Heading and uh, flight level 200 of the Tobit, United uh, 5. Now personally, I don't think that's too bad. I'm not entirely sure how accurate the received signal strength meter is though, but overall I think it's a very usable. 
Now that was with the squelch set to one and I was using my outside VHF antenna. Well, there we go. That's the TID or TID Radio H3 Plus. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. Now, is it worth upgrading from the H3 to the H3 Plus? Probably not unless some custom firmware comes out that makes use of that extra speed and extra RAM. Or if you want to use Bluetooth audio enabled devices such as headsets or speaker microphones that work over Bluetooth. Until next video, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.